Today, we're talking about a new way that USCIS is waiving interviews. This is specific to adjustment of status cases. Friends, welcome to Green Card Guys TV. I'm your host, John Ting, practicing immigration law all across the world and in the United States, in Houston, Texas, helping you solve your immigration problem and maybe even preventing it from happening in the first place. In general, USCIS is trying to speed up cases. It now allows premium processing for many case types, but still only with employment-based cases. So if you're an, if you're an employer or you're an employee, uh, or even going through a self-petition, you can file for premium processing, or even for a yeah, national interest waiver, uh, e-visa, investor visa. So that is possible. Which, by the way, uh, the e-visa is typically called an investor visa. But you know, another way to think about it is like a startup business, or you already have an existing business, but you want to expand. That's one one way you can think of it or creating. So you can just in general, just call it a business visa. So most people think that, oh, investor means like you have to invest a stem, substantial amount of money. No, that's not the case, but we'll save that for a different different show. So again, back to the USCS waiving interviews. It's a wonderful, wonderful trend. Now, this is for adjustment of status cases. And typically we've seen this for, of course, most, most of our clients related to family-based uh, spouse marriage case to a U.S. citizen. So yeah, that, that's what's going on here. For us, it's been starting since January, early January, 2023. Yeah, we just had an interview yesterday, but it was not for adjustment of status. It was for uh, naturalization to become a citizen. But yeah, about two or three weeks ago, I, I presented at the or attended client's interview uh, and that one had an interview for adjustment of status to a U.S. citizen spouse because I believe because there's a prior marriage involved where they filed an application as well. But other than that, if it's a less, you know, essentially no red flags, then they will, from what I've seen, and again, it's not automatic for you just because I'm saying this, but at least the way with our proven checklist and our process, our quality control, I believe it's been helping our clients. So they don't even have to attend the interview. Now, I think it's wild. I think it's great. But I do think it's pretty uh, pretty amazing. But I'm not sure how the government can tell truly, truly legitimate or not. Now, fortunately, not going. All our clients are legit. It's genuine marriage. But I, I'm just imagining other scenarios where maybe there's a few bad apples that pass through. And then because of those bad apples, the government gets rid of this trend. And we don't want that, right? We want to keep keep it going for the trend of waiving interviews. So I kind of give you that. But there's so many other tips I can happy to share right now is make sure you get a joint bank account. Okay, there's some of y'all. I was just watching this Netflix show yesterday about, uh, I think they call it How to Have a Rich Life. And it's basically, um, you know, not a typical financial advisor, but he was asking questions <laughs> kind of similar to that, that we would ask. Would you consider having a joint bank account? Some people said no, because they don't trust each other. So um, aside from USCIS wanting to see a commingling of funds, meaning money is being passed through with each other, that essentially any person, any spouse in this relationship, if they wanted to, they could withdraw the money. And of course, hopefully they don't do that, but they have the authority, permission to do that, legal permission. And so basically at the end of the day, the government wants to know that you trust the spouse to do that. They, you've given them access or vice versa. It doesn't have to be that the that you have to create a new bank account, okay? It can be an existing account, and it only requires one. Fortunately, USCIS doesn't say, oh, we have to see every single bank account. No, it's just one that's joint, okay? So if you want the best possible scenario for you, don't be afraid to have a joint account, a shared account. Maybe you say, I only want a savings account joint and shared together. That's fine, but you want to make sure whatever account you have together that you're actually using it. Just a simple fact of having it shared together and you, you send in one piece of paper showing that has both names on it, that's not gonna be good enough, right? It's gonna be, in general, gonna be sufficient for now for filing, but ultimately, you know, if you are just now adding one other spouse to the account, I'd wait a couple months if you can, especially if your goal is to avoid having an interview. Maybe it's not because you're avoiding, avoiding interview because you just like, that you can't control what's gonna come out of your mouth, but maybe because you you each live in a different city or something, so just, or just traveling, y'all like to travel or something, so maybe it's just difficult for logistics reasons. But either way, I know a lot of y'all are so excited to get that work permit, to get that AP, Advanced Parole for Travel Permission. I um, mean, just want the green card, residence status, I get it. But 
that's part of our quality control that we have to slow clients down. We're not slowing down our process, okay? Once someone authorizes us to help them, we call the same day, onboard the same day, get going, okay? We share a Dropbox folder, share it with the contains a checklist, SMA step-by-step timeline, but we review what you currently have. We give suggestions and yes, some clients push back, but ultimately we've noticed every time we stuck our ground, clients have been approved, but not just approved, but the recent trend, the interview was waived. So especially when clients, even if clients, um, you know, live in Austin, Texas, they don't have a field office in Austin, Texas. So they got to go to San Antonio, right? So it's saving a trip for us. The way our law firm looks at it, we're looking straight approval, reduce RFE. That's part of our quality control. We can't control it, right? Sometimes USCIS will ask for evidence that we already provided. I know it's annoying, but that's been happening sometimes. It's rare, but it does happen. Now, uh, I do see some comments and questions, so I'll get to that soon. Just want to wrap up some tips. Now, I can't go through every single tip here on how to best able to get a, a case waived, but these are some tips that can help you, okay? Now, if you're doing this on your own, so I was saying about waiting a couple months is for the purpose of getting a couple statements. Now, I'm not saying you got to deposit like 2500 5000 at a time, but you have to have money going in and out. The government wants to see a bank statement to see transaction activity. Right. So people ask me, do I have to provide every single bill? Do the bills have to be joined? Now, ever since I've been married before, I always said, oh, the bills have to be have both names. Right. I don't know. I just did that. But I mean, have both names. OK, but I know that's difficult. Depends on the utility vendor, cable, Netflix, whatever. So at least in that one account, whether you use a debit card or not, or let's say it's a credit card. Right. If it shows, if you use one of those accounts for most of your expenses, have it on that one account. I know a lot of people, you divvy it up in so many different accounts. Try to keep it on one for the purpose so that when you provide that statement, credit card statement, a bank statement to the uh, to in the file, it reduces how much paperwork you have to provide, okay? So hopefully, I think that's a huge tip because otherwise, you know, in the past, we always, it was like this big stack of paperwork. That's it. Look, we try to make it easy, not just for clients, but also for USCS interviewing, or at this point, reviewing officers, those that review the case files and determine if the case is going to be waived interview or not. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Happy to go in more detail later on. If you received any value from any of our videos in the past, we greatly appreciate your feedback. Or even if you've spoken with one of our CARES team members, uh, please go to reviewteamlaw.com. We greatly appreciate your feedback. Okay, folks. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care now.